I want to share with you all something very, <clears throat> very serious. Um, I believe we're living in an hour where the majority of God's people um, are worshiping, uh, worshiping God, or at least think they're worshiping God, um, on the surface. They think they're worshiping God, but it's a very surface uh, experience. Very few today have a deep uh, communion with God from spirit to spirit. Most today don't really understand what it means to commune with God. Where the scripture says, deep calleth unto deep. Most, the majority, uh, when when they are singing in the time we call it, what we see the churches, they call it praise and worship. Well, they never get to worship. They may praise God, and most times it'll be praising God with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. But there are those that sincerely praise God, but they never enter into worship. And I think that if you're in a hurry, that you, you, if you're in a hurry, you, you haven't entered into worship yet. There is a place, folks, in God, uh, which I believe is the secret place. A place of worship. A place where we commune with God. A place that I think is even beyond fellowship. It's a place where we adore God. And I want to read some scriptures to you that uh, deal with this subject. And I hope that that you will understand where, uh, you know, where I'm coming from and, and what I feel like, you know, the message that the Lord has put on my heart is that, you know, God is seeking for true worshipers. Amen? He's seeking for true worshipers. Yeah, so let's let's turn to John. Now I will say this: if you're in the flesh, uh, you probably won't be able to endure this message. You probably won't be able to continue to listen. So, you may want to uh, pause this message and take some time to enter into the Spirit. Because you, you, you can't commune in the Spirit if you're in the flesh. And this message is not uh, words of man. Jesus said, The words I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. And this message, the Word of God, is spirit and life. And so if you're not in a place to receive spirit and life, you probably won't be able to receive this message. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And we're going to begin our reading in uh, verse uh, 23. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must 
worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. We see the Trinity right now. This is the Trinity. This is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus is not saying that it's him that's seeking worship. He said the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, when, when Jesus says the Father seeketh such to worship him, the Father, he's saying you worship the Father through the Holy Spirit and through his Son. Jesus is the truth. We worship the Father through the Son and the Holy Ghost, through the truth, through the Spirit and truth. Do you understand? Jesus came to this world to make a way where we could come to the Father. He's the door. Amen? We enter in through him, through the truth. You can't come to the Father but through me, Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goeth unto the Father but by me. Jesus did not come into this world to draw attention to himself. He is the door to the Father. It is the Father that is seeking true worshipers. So, if you never get beyond the Holy Ghost in Jesus... You haven't really entered into worship yet. Jesus is bringing us to the Father. Do you understand? We don't worship the Father any more than we worship Jesus or the Son of God or, or the Holy Ghost, I should say, in, in, in the Son of God. The difference is, is that we worship the Father through in other words, we have no access to the Father but through Jesus, through the Holy Ghost, and through Jesus. If you're going to get to the Father, it's going to be through the Son. So you've got to acknowledge the Son. You've got to acknowledge Jesus. You've got to accept Jesus. And you've got to accept His forgiveness. You've got to accept the position that he holds as an advocate with the Father. That he, only he, can justify us so that we can come to the Father. Amen? You and I cannot come to the Father until Jesus has justified us. He does that through his own righteousness. And believe it or not, all of this takes place in worship. It's all worship. But there is greater worship. There's greater depths of worship. There is deeper and deeper worship. And sadly, most never get off the surface never leave the surface. Most stay on the surface. And they never learn about the depths of God. They never learn about the depths of God so that they, they can be free from this world. Listen, friend, if you're still uh, caught up in the world and intrigued by the world and you haven't gone very deep, the deeper you go in God, the more separated you will be from this world. And you'll find that the deeper you go in the ocean, you'll eventually die. You can only go so deep before your body will be crushed. 
and you can only go so high in this world before you won't have any oxygen and you'll die. Friend, it's only through Jesus Christ that we can go higher and higher. To go above Mount Everest, to go above the highest mountain, to go above even uh, the moon, to go be, uh, beyond Mars, to go beyond this world. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? If you're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, you've got to let go of this world. And you'll want to. The deeper you go with God, the more you'll want to let go of this world. Because you're dying. But yet you live. If you try it sometime, without any equipment, see how deep you can go in the ocean, you'll find that you can only go so far. And even if you do get to a great depth in the ocean, you'll find that you can't come up very quickly. So you better make sure that you don't go so deep that you can't come back up after you've gone down. Do you understand? They call it the bends when you come up too fast. You can die. And we're not talking about the depths of the ocean. We're talking about the depths of God. We're talking about the depths of God's Spirit. We're talking about going deeper in God and going higher in God. We're talking about the depths of God, people. And sadly, when you go into most services today, into the church services, people never get beyond praise. They never enter into that place of commune, to commune with God. That place you'll never come to until you begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness. It's as you are hungering and thirsting after God that you find yourself deeper, going deeper in God. Because you go deeper in God the more you drink in His Spirit. See, most don't know this, but you can't be filled with the Holy Ghost unless you're drinking in. you got to drink in the Spirit of God. We've been all made to drink in of the same Spirit. That's how you come into the family of God. That's how you are brought into the body of Christ, through drinking in the Spirit. And as you hunger and you thirst, as you thirst after righteousness and God fills you with his spirit, you begin to get so filled. But what you don't may not understand is as you're getting filled, you're being changed. And you're, as it were, the wine skin that's stretching. Your heart's being enlarged. You're stretching and you begin to drink more and you drink more and you drink more. And you just keep drinking and you stay filled and then you get to the place where you're full and then you just keep drinking and you eventually get to the place where you have the fullness. And that's where God wants to bring us to. But there's got to be a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. I'll tell you, I have such a burden in my spirit, my heart, people, to see true worship. To be with people that know how to worship God. It is such a, a grievance of my spirit when I see people that don't know how to go beyond the surface. They don't know how to go beyond just basic praise. They, they don't know how to go beyond lip service. They don't know how to commune with God. It's the Father seeking true worshipers. Not just to worship in spirit, but to worship in spirit and in truth. You can't worship in spirit and in truth if you're not living the truth. Amen? You can't. You tell me how you're going to worship in spirit and truth if you're not living the truth. You've got to apply the truth of God's word to your life if you're going to enter into that level of worship. 